After five pages of recap, Kirsty's mother calls. The girls go downstairs, where they recap another page. Oh, no, the book tricked me into thinking the recap was over. Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. The neighbors come by. They're upset because they lost their cat. Rachel and Kirsty search the neighborhood. Everyone has a cloud over their heads. Literally, every person in town is angry or depressed. For example, this random stranger is angry that he looks exactly like Kirsty's dad. They put us back to back on the same page. Everyone's gonna know we're the same guy. Pearl shows up and explains the goblin with the cloud feather is responsible. Clouds are coming out of the candy factory. The girls turn into fairies to go inside, where they discover the goblin is making cotton candy clouds. That is, he's making cotton candy fly all over the place so he can eat as much as he wants. I'm pretty sure cotton candy doesn't fly as clouds in real life, but it still sounds super delicious. The goblin sees Rachel and shoves her inside a cloud. Now she's stuck and can't get out. Christy turns to normal size and prepares to kick some goblin butt. Wow, that is an angry face on her. Pearl saves Rachel and they make a plan. They challenge the goblin by saying he can't work the cloud feather as well as Pearl can. The goblin shows off by making clouds spin around him. Since Rachel is in a cloud, she's easily able to lean over and steal the cloud feather. The goblin tries to take it back, but he falls into the candy wrapping machine and gets wrapped up. Just like the last book, the girls leave the goblin there, where he's sure to be discovered by humans and cause a panic. In the other books, they at least implied the goblins went back to Fairyland without being discovered. Here, the girls straight up don't care about exposing the reality of Fairyland. Pearl returns the cloud feather, everyone in town is happy again, and it turns out the lost cat had kittens. Aww. The end. I like this book. The cotton candy clouds were creative, and the cloud feather giving everyone a cloud over their head was a good idea, too. The author could have been lazy and just made it cloudy outside, but no, they took an extra step and improved the book with a clever idea. I also liked how readers aren't told about Pearl and Rachel's plan to trick the goblin. That way, the trick is more of a surprise. Plus, I like Pearl's design the best out of all the weather fairies. She's the most interesting looking, in my opinion. Please don't spam this video with angry comments about Goldie being the best weather fairy. I give Rainbow Magic number 10, Pearl the Cloud Fairy, a thumbs up.